Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Hello dear students, I hope you are all doing well. Uh, welcome to another video from uh, our Easy Chemistry for All channel. This is Mr. Muad and uh, we are going to continue with our videos explaining through the chemistry topics as we have been doing in the previous term inshallah. So again guys, thank you for your subscription. Uh, keep uh, interacting in the comments section. If you have any questions or any inquiries, you can contact me here. Uh, and also help grow the channel even more so that many more students can uh, benefit from uh, the videos inshallah. So in this video, we are continuing our journey through the topics of chemistry and we are going to start module eight. For some of you, uh, this is uh, can be this can be uh, chapter four, but the title of the um, the chapter is the same: chemical reactions. Okay, so it is the same for grade ten advanced or grade eleven general. Okay, this is the same thing. Okay, but this is from the Inspire Chemistry book, and they call it module eight. But it's the same content, same chapter, same. Uh, sections and everything. So this is lesson one, reactions and equations. Okay, so we are going to start talking about chemical reactions and how we can represent them uh, using chemical equations. So the learning outcomes for our lesson are the following. First of all, recognize evidence of chemical change. يعني نتعرف على الدلائل على حدوث تغير كيميائي. Represent chemical reactions with equation. نمثل التفاعلات الكيميائية بالمعادلات. And balance chemical equations. اللي هي وزن المعادلات الكيميائية. Okay. Which is balancing chemical equations, which you guys studied, uh, I think, previously in in grade eight or grade seven. Okay. So how are chemical reactions modeled? How can we represent or show chemical reactions on paper? So chemical reactions, this is the main idea. Chemical reactions are represented by a balanced chemical equations or by balanced chemical equations, guys, okay? So this is very important. We need a balanced chemical equation to represent a chemical reaction. And this is a real world uh, reading link. When you purchase bananas from a grocery store, they might be green. Within a few days, the bananas turn yellow. This color change is one of the ways you can tell a chemical reaction occurs. So the change of color is an evidence for the occurrence of a chemical reaction, okay? Or the occurrence of a chemical reaction. And that's what we are going to start uh, our uh, PowerPoint with. First of all, we can go through these vocabulary uh, keywords. So chemical reaction, reactant, المتفاعل, product, الناتج, Chemical equation, معادلة كيمياء, coefficient, المعامل, and we are going to see each one of them throughout the PowerPoint. Okay, so you should know from pre previous, from your previous studies that a chemical change is the process involving one or more substances changing into new substances. So something changes to a new thing. That's the chemical change. التغيير الكيميائي مادة تتحول إلى مادة أخرى تختلف عنها في الخصائص. Okay. So this again, uh, the definition of a reactant. For example, you have eggs, flour, and uh, milk. Okay. Flour, sorry. And uh, the product is going to be a cake, right? Tahin, bed, mahalib. If you mix them, you'll get a cake. So this is a reactant, and this is a product. So first of all, let's discuss the physical and chemical changes and their evidences, okay? So what's a physical change? A change that does not involve a change in the type of a substance, but in its physical properties, such as physical state, يعني solid, liquid, or gas, صلب سائل أو غاز, density, or particle size, or shape, يعني لما المادة يتغير فيها الحالة الفيزيائية أو الكثافة أو الحجم أو الشكل هذا تغير فيزياء. A chemical change is a change that results in the formation of new substances, also known as a chemical reaction. Okay. And these some are some examples of physical and chemical changes. Okay. So a chemical change can be combustion, الاحتراق لما نحرق 
شيء rotting تعفن rusting صدأ digestion الهضم هذه كلها أمثلة على chemical changes but physical changes can be something like melting ذوبان shredding cutting something chopping boiling it does not change the substance it just changes its uh, physical state or shape or size okay now chemical reaction is the process by which atoms of one or more substances the reactants are rearranged to form different substances or the products and we can represent it like this so you have some reactants here and then they will change into products now. example hydrogen plus oxygen gives me water right so this is a chemical reaction and a chemical equation which we can um, uh, which we can or which we will see inshallah throughout this chapter and throughout the PowerPoint now what are some of the evidence of chemical reactions the first one is change in temperature so if you mix two things and you find that the temperature is changing then automatically that tells you that there is a chemical reaction okay or that signifies a chemical reaction if there is a change in color it also tells you that this is a chemical reaction if there is change in smell or odor that's also an evidence or a sign so evidence is like a sign the formation of bubbles so you know when you put some uh, tablets uh, in water and then they start bubbling that's an indication of a chemical reaction bubble formation or gas formation finally the precipitate formation when we mix two things that's also a sign of a chemical reaction and we will learn more inshallah about the precipitate formation in uh, the next lessons and that's the end of part one so we know what is a chemical reaction we know what's a physical change we know what's a chemical change and we know some of the signs of chemical reactions okay now we go to the most important part which is part two and that is representing chemical reactions using equations كيف نحن نمثل التفاعلات الكيميائية باستخدام المعادلات الكيميائية. And to do that, guys, first of all, you need to remember chemical formulas from term one, okay, or from previous studies. Remember, ionic compounds, covalent compounds. كيف نكتب الصيغة الكيميائية? To be able to write chemical equations that represent reactions. And that's why I have added these exercises to refresh your memory. So please try. And read this question and try to answer. So, what does a chemical formula represent? Is it the name of an element or it's the symbols of elements and compounds? So, of course, the symbols of elements and compounds. For example, water, the chemical formula is H2O, so symbols, okay? What is the chemical formula of sodium chloride? So you know, you should know that sodium is Na, chloride is Cl, plus and minus, right? And then we make an ionic compound between them and we write the formula unit in Acl, right? Okay. How many hydrogen atoms are in H2? So in here, you have two hydrogen atoms because the number below the element represents how many atoms we have. So we have two. And what about oxygen? We have one. So this is like H2O1, but in chemistry, we don't write one. So we will just put H2O. What is the total number of atoms in CaCO3? So let's divide this into the elements. We have one Ca, we have one C, and we have three oxygen atoms. So in total, we have five atoms. 
because the total when we add them gives me five. Okay. There's a W missing here. How many oxygen atoms are in the compound shown in the image? Lua Al2 SO4 and you have three here. So what does this formula mean, guys? This formula is an ionic formula, right? This formula means the following. It means you have two Al, right? And then you have three of SO4. It means you have SO4, SO4, and SO4. طبعاً, these are the charges, but the charges are not important here, okay? Because they are asking about the number of oxygen atoms. So if we have added the oxygen here, can be cool. And the four, add four, add four. يعني يساوي twelve. So the answer is twelve, guys. طريقة أسهل على طول نضرب هاي الثلاثة في أربعة هنا. The easiest way to do it is multiply the three times four. So we actually have twelve. If they ask about how many atoms of S. Multiply three by one here, so we have three s. هذي واحد اثنين ثلاثة. So this is how we can deal with these subscripts and superscripts. Okay. All right. So now we go into the lesson how we can use different symbols in a chemical equation. Like how can we write a chemical equation, guys? Okay. So these are the symbols we use. In equations, I will show you the plus sign. This separates two or more reactants or products, as you can see here. Right? It separates two or more reactants or two or more products. يعني تقول لي كم عدد المواد اللي عندي في التباع. This arrow separates reactants from products. So in the left side, في الجهة اليسار, I have reactants. On the right side of the arrow, I have products. Double arrow, sometimes written like this as well, separates reactant from products and indicates a reversible reaction. يعني التفاعل ممكن يروح من اليسار اليمين أو اليمين اليسار. If you see S like this on a reactant or a product, it means that the reactant is in the solid state. يعني حالة صلبة. If you see L, هاي L, okay, مش I, this is L, liquid state. يعني الحالة السائلة. G in the gaseous state, معناها الحالة الغازية. AQ identifies a water solution. So like AQ here. And we'll see what that means. So AQ means aqueous. Okay? So AQ means aqueous. What does aqueous mean? Aqueous means dissolved in water. For example, NACL here is solid. اللي هو الملح. الملح صلب صح؟ لما نذوبه في الماء, when we put it in water, بيكون ذايب so it will be dissolved so we don't write it as S we write it as AQ so AQ means dissolved أو ذائب في الماء okay in a water solution here so now there are two ways to represent a chemical reaction or an equation we have a word equation and we have a skeleton equation okay so let's read in a chemical reaction between aluminum in the solid state, so automatically you write Al and S, and the bromine in the liquid state, which is Br liquid, Br2 liquid, the reaction's product is aluminum bromide, right? So how can we write the word equation here? You do it. In the following manner. So the word equation uses words, guys. So you write the reactants, the reactants, and the products. So you write aluminum, solid, plus bromine, liquid, and put the sahem, gives me aluminum bromide. So in this word equation, it reads as aluminum and bromine. كيف نقرأ هاي المعادلة؟ aluminum and bromine react. 
to produce aluminum bromide. Okay? The word equation does not tell you anything about the number of atoms. يعني أنا ما أعرف كم عدد الذرات اللي موجودة في التفاعل. I just know who is the reactant and who is the product. Okay? Now, if we want to write the skeleton equation, so the skeleton equation, we use the chemical formula, not words. So if we go back here, you write your arrow here, and you know that aluminum and bromine are reactants, so Al solid plus Br2 liquid gives me aluminum bromide solid. So this is the skeleton equation, guys. Okay. So we use the symbols and the formulas. And also, the equation lack information about the number of atoms involved. Okay, we know how many atoms here. So, in other words, it is not balanced. هذا اللي قصدوا بهاي الجملة. هو we know the number of atoms, but sometimes it's the correct one, sometimes it's not the correct. We are going to learn how to balance this equation. Okay. So now we can start some. Uh, some work on the skeleton and the word equation. So for example here they are telling you write skeleton equations for the following word equations. So they are giving you the word equations. So this is word equation. So W E Q is word equation and this is also a word equation. So let's try and do number one. This is very important diatomic molecules. For example, if we have hydrogen alone, we write it as H2. If we have nitrogen, we write it as N2. If we have oxygen, we write it as O2. If we have bromine, we write it as Br2. So don't write Br. This is wrong. It has to be as Br2. Same thing for iodine, chlorine, and fluorine. So for example, here you have hydrogen gas. So to write the skeleton equation, we'll put H2 because hydrogen is a diatomic molecule. يعني فيه ذرتين يتكون من ذرتين. put the gas plus bromine it's here Br2 and then you have hydrogen bromide now this is from your previous studies you should remember that hydrogen bromide is given as HBr okay gas if we go to number two, carbon monoxide, from your previous studies, it's a covalent compound. It means CO gas plus oxygen. Look, oxygen is a diatomic molecule. هذيلا حفظ. لازم نعرفهم عشان لو عطانا في الامتحان نعرف كيف نكتبهم. Plus O2 gas gives me carbon dioxide CO2 gas. Okay? And these are the solutions, guys. And you have a challenge question here, which you can work on your own. Okay? It has to do with term one stuff, with the ionic compounds, potassium chloride. Okay, you should remember that chlorate is ClO3 minus, and potassium is K, and so on. Okay? So that takes us to the law of mass conservation which is essential to write chemical equations. Remember when we said that the equation lacks information about the number of atoms, yani not balanced? So, there's something called the Kutla. Okay? So, have a look here, guys. Do you remember this reaction? I am starting with one Al, right? One Al atom. And I have one Al atom. Here it is. I have two Br atoms. And here I have three Br atoms. How is that possible? Where did I get another Br? So there is a problem with this equation, right? We are missing something. It's not balanced. And remember, equation means left side equals to the right side in terms of numbers, right? So that takes us to balancing chemical equations. 
So how do we balance the chemical equation? We use something called the coefficient, المعامل. So what's the coefficient? Coefficient is the number written in front of the reactant or product describing the lowest whole number ratio of their amounts. شو معنى هالكلام؟ Imagine you have two O2, right? So this two here, which we write in front of the reactant or the product, is called the coefficient. هذا هو المعامل. هاي الأرقام نقدر نغير فيها نفس ما نريد. الأرقام اللي تكون تحت ما نلمسها أبدا. ممكن نغير فقط في الكوفيشنت يعني we play with it until everything is balanced and we are going to see this بس الأرقام اللي تحت هني ما نلمسها أبدا okay this is very important guys so if we want to represent this if we want to know how many atoms of oxygen are here we should multiply the two here by the two here because 2O2 means that you have O2 and O2 يعني عندك اثنين من ال O2 فعدد الأكسجينز كم في التوتال أربعة. So easily we can just multiply the two here by the two here. And that means we have four oxygen atoms. What about this one? How many Cl atoms do we have? Again, multiply, and you have eight chlorine atoms. How many oxygen atoms do we have here? So, this is tricky, right? So, you have two in here because we have the two outside. And then we need to multiply this five by the two. So, in total, we have ten oxygen atoms. Okay? And this is the two, it means that I have two oxygen here, right? And this is the five that is outside, it means that I have five from the O2. Five divided by two is ten. That's why we have ten oxygen atoms. Okay? Now, how many atoms do we have in aluminum, sulfate, each and every one? Look at Al. We have 2, 3 multiplied by 2 is 6. Look at S. We have 3 here, right? And we need to multiply also by 3. So 3 times 3 is, 3 times 3 is 9. What about oxygen? الأكسجين هنا عندي أربعة لكن في ثلاثة برا أضربها فيها ثلاثة ضرب أربعة اثناش وفي ثلاثة برا هني ثلاثة ضرب اثناش ستة وثلاثين so I have thirty six oxygen atoms this is like playing with math right so that's the number of atoms that we have so what we are going to do we are going to use the coefficient concept these numbers that we put it in front of reactants or products to maintain the law of conservation of mass. قانون حفظ الكتلة states that هذا القانون tells you that matter can neither created can be neither created or destroyed. Okay? يعني ما أقدر لا أخلق مادة جديدة ولا أكسرها أو أفقدها تماما. Okay? يعني total number of mass should be equal. So the number of atoms in the reactants must equal the number of atoms in the products. So chemical equations must, must show that the matter is conserved during the reaction. That's why if you look here, this equation, we don't have any numbers here, any coefficients, right? Nothing. But if we use the concept of coefficients, you will find that I added two here, three here, and two here. Now we have two Al, and here we have two Al. And here I have six bromine atoms, and in here we have six bromine atoms, and it is balanced, okay? We can say that the, uh, equation here is balanced guys okay using these coefficients and we are going to learn now how to do that okay so what are the steps for balancing chemical equations first of all write the skeleton equation for the reaction 
وبعد المرات يكون معطينك اياها على طول نمبر 2 كاونت ذا نمبر اوف اتومز اوف ايليمنتس ان ذا رياكتنس نحسب عدد كل عدد ذرات كل عنصر في جهه المتفاعلات كاونت ذا اتومز ذا ايليمنتس ان ذا برودكتس ناو تشينج ذا كوفيشنتس تو ميك ذا نمبر اوف ايتش ايليمنت ايكوال ان بوث سايدز يعني الحين ندخل الكوفيشنتس الارقام هاي بحيث ان احنا نخلي عدد الذرات في اليسار يساوي عدد الذرات في اليمين write the coefficients in their lowest possible ratio okay what do we mean by this i'm going to tell you and then check your work for example 2al plus 3br2 gives me 2al br3 now guys The ratio between these coefficients, يعني two to three to two, is the lowest ratio. لأن ما في عامل مشترك ما بين الاثنين والثلاثة والاثنين ما بينهم الثلاثة كلهم. But imagine if I have, if I did four al plus three br two gives me four al br three. Now here I have four al. And here I have, uh, sorry, um, here six, sita, and here I have twelve br. And sita darb thnein. And here I have four al, and here I have four darb thnash thnasher br. The معادلة موزونة. It is balanced, but we have a problem, guys. Look at the ratio between the coefficients four, six, and four. في بينهم عامل مشترك. نعم which is 2 if we divide this by 2 this by 2 this by 2 it will give us 2 to 3 to 2 which is this original one so this is wrong that's what we mean by the coefficients in their lowest possible ratio لازم نتاكد انه خلاص ما في عامل مشترك ما بينهم لما نوزن okay that's what we mean by this here. So let's check this equation here. So first of all, sorry, uh, how to balance this equation? So again, count the number of atoms in the left side. So we have Na, we have one Na, okay? O, we have one O, we have one H, we have one Ca, we have two Br. What about the left? The right side. We have one Na. We have two oxygen, right? We have two hydrogens. We have one Ca. We have one Br. Okay. So the first thing that you try to do, leave O and H to the end. The oxygen and hydrogen, we'll try to remove them first. We'll try to remove any other things other than oxygen and hydrogen. Okay? So okay, Na is fine, Ca is fine. Look at Br here. So there is a problem in Br, right? Here I have two Br, and here I have one Br. How can I make them equal? If I multiply this by two here, if we put the coefficient of two, now the number of Br becomes two Br, and also the number of sodium becomes two sodium atoms, right? So automatically, what you have to do, you have to try and balance sodium now because you have one here. So if you put two here. The sodium now becomes two, and the oxygen becomes two, and the hydrogen becomes two, which is awesome. Automatically, everything is balanced now, right? So the final equation is two NaOH Aq plus 
CaBr2Aq gives me CaOH2 solid plus 2NaBrAq. Now this is a balanced chemical equation. Okay, now this is a balanced. Okay, so awesome. So this is how we do it, guys. Okay, now you try on your own. Try to balance these chemical equations. الحين لازم عشان نسوي balancing لازم نتدرب وفي طرق راح تساعد يعني هي ترى لأن إنه صح وخطأ يعني كل شوي نقدر نعدل على أشياء نقدر نصحح هني نزيد هني نحذف هاي نعيد هاي. So if you solve a lot, it's going to be easier for you. Okay. So look here, I have two H, two H, one O and two O. So I'll put two here. الحين صار عندي أربعة هيدروجين. So I'll put two here. Of course, if this is empty, it means there is one. بس إحنا ما نكتب واحد بس مرات يكتبونها مرات مرات ما يكتبونها. لكن هذا البوكس يعني إذا كان فاضي معناها it's one. So here you have four H and two O. Here you have four H and two. يعني الجهة اليسار وجهة اليمين صار عندهم عدد متساوي من الذرات. F E two O three. So you have two F E. I'll put two. Right. And you have here three oxygen. الحين ثلاثة وهاي اثنين. شو العامل المشترك ما بينهم? So when you see that there is three and two and there is no common factor, it's like you are trying to add one over three plus one over two. في الرياضيات شو نسوي نوحد المقامات صح؟ يعني نضرب الثلاثة في الاثنين نضرب الاثنين في الثلاثة هني نضرب في اثنين هني نضرب في اثنين فتصير two over six plus عفوا هني نضرب في الثلاثة two over six plus three over six نضرب هني في الثلاثة so it is five over six فهاي القضية إن إحنا نضرب كل واحدة في الثانية you are going to do the same thing هاي اثنين نضربها في ثلاثة وهاي ثلاثة نضربها في اثنين so after this, you have six oxygen, and now you have six oxygen. But now you have four Fe. So instead of writing two, you would write four. And now you have it. Okay? Now you can practice on these guys, solve it alone on your own time, and you can, these are all the exercises. Okay? Uh, let me choose one. Maybe solve it here. Let's choose number five. Ti plus Cl4 plus O2 gives me Ti, O2 plus Cl2. Okay. A Ti وضعها, okay, because you have one here and one here. When I say compare, يعني نشوف على يسار السهم ويمين السهم. Cl, we have four here and here we have two. So write two here. Oxygen, we have two here, we have two here. So one, one, one. Okay. And you can check your solutions for the problems here, guys, okay? So which of the following is not an example of a chemical reaction? So boiling water, because it's a physical uh, reaction, physical change. Which of the following is not true about coefficients in a balanced chemical equation? Not true. There are numbers written in front of reactants and products, صح? They are usually whole numbers, yes. يعني ما في فواصل, ما في decimals, no decimals. They describe the highest whole number ratio. No. They describe the lowest, guys. Right? They are not usually written if the value is 1. Yes, that is true. If the value is 1, we usually don't write it. But in here, I'm writing it because in live worksheets, if you don't write 1 and you leave it empty, it will, uh, it will deduct marks or it will consider it incorrect. Okay. Which observation is not physical evidence that a chemical reaction has occurred? So, not physical evidence. What do you think? If there is so physical evidence that a chemical reaction has happened, يعني دليل على حدوث تفاعل كيميائي مش تفاعل فيزيائي. There is a difference, okay? There is an other change. This is actually true. A solid is no longer magnetic. True. A solid melts. This one. 
لانه اذا ذوبنا شيء صلب يتحول لسائل هذا مش تغير كيميائي اتس نوت ا كيميكال ريأكشن which of the following is not true about balancing chemical equations subscripts should subscripts اللي هي الارقام اللي تكون تحت هني should never be changed انا قلت لكم we should never touch it which is true coefficients are written in their lowest possible ratio true coefficients are changed to make the number of each element equal in both sides يعني a و b و c كلهم صح يعني اكيد دي هي الغلط اللي هي عكس a so دي هي عكس a اوكي okay. لازم ما نغير السبسكريبتس and we finished our lesson guys so we uh, finished these three learning objectives recognizing evidence of chemical change presenting chemical reactions and equations and balancing chemical equations guys. so thank you very much for watching the video please put a like subscribe to the channel uh, add something in the comment section And I wish you all the best, guys. With Taufiq, inshallah, until the next time. All the best.